And then I just got this little grid in my mind, right? There's um, a comparison chart. Which do you prefer? At the top, it's a little tiny. You might not see it, but it says flesh versus spirit. Which do you prefer? Stress versus calm. Which do you prefer? Unbelief versus faith. Fear versus peace. Hiding versus transparency. Maybe. Not always so easy. That's the truth part, right? Not everybody's fully transparent. Look, there's sometimes you shouldn't be fully transparent because there's some things some people don't need to know. I'm not talking about over, uh, whatever, revealing things. There's an appropriate thing. But when he's showing you something about him, don't hide from him. That's the first thing they did in the garden when they realized they sinned is they hid. Think of that. The wages of sin is hiding and transparency. But if we serve what it... It says right here in John 16, 13, when the spirit of truth comes, how many want him to come? Say yes with confidence because you'll then give me the courage to deal with the truth that you show me about my life because something needs to change. And nobody wants to go to the cross. But he's asking you to take that thing that needs to change, take it to the cross. You know, Paul, when you were talking about that story with your son, it was so powerful. I saw a picture of God coming down with a big eraser and erasing the dividing wall that was between you and your son. You know, like you had to be willing to take a step that was a little scary because you didn't want to be rejected by him. And, and, and God worked it out. God will lubricate these relationships. And sometimes relationships could be one of the toughest areas, right? Because there's so many lines of baggage in there. But no, nope, like God will erase that line. And then you do your part. And when you first reach out, they may have a negative reaction because they haven't heard from you in a while, right? So be, be willing to accept that. That it might not be the best response initially, but the Holy Spirit is the hound of heaven. <laughs> and God will sick the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, they're like, well, they did reach out to me. Maybe I should call them back so I can give them a piece of my mind. And they give you a piece of their mind, and you give them the peace of your mind. P-E-A-C-E. -E. <laughs> when he comes, he's going to guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears from the Father, he will speak, and he'll declare to you the things that are to come. How about this one? Samuel had died, and all Israel lamented for him and buried him in Ramah. And when Saul saw that the army of the Philistines saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. Anybody in here ever been afraid? Yes, be honest, because this is the spirit of truth. Well, Christians aren't supposed to be afraid. Well, not if a bear is coming at you in the woods. Right? You're not supposed to live in fear, but if you see a truck coming, don't step off the curb. There's a healthy amount of awareness you should have. So it's not wrong that he was afraid. It's what he did with the fear. He camped out in it, and he took the wrong choice, man. This is not Holy Spirit leading him. His heart was trembling greatly. And, he, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him. And Saul said to his servants, find me a woman who's a medium, so that I may go to her and inquire her of her. That means a witch. Find me a witch. I said once before, why would you go to a medium when you can go to the extra large God? You don't need medium. God is supersized. Get rid of the mediums. <laughs> Come on. Dang. <laughs> All right. This must be the one God wants me to look at. Romans 8. Go to Romans 8 up there, okay? It's just being a little sketchy with me here. I'm almost done. It says the sufferings that we go through in the present time are not worth putting in the scale alongside the glory that's going to be unveiled for us. Whew. That's really worth meditating on, okay? Because the reason that guy posts his 430 thing every morning is because he knows how hard it is to tame your flesh. And how many voices are in your head saying, don't get up, skip it today. You don't need to work out. You're going to have a heart attack if you go to the gym. <laughs> But you know, your flesh is a really good liar. If you fast, you're going to die. <laughs> no, I think most of us got enough reserve to handle it for a while. Right? I mean, at least a meal won't kill you. <laughs> Another portion of Scripture says these light and momentary afflictions. When you have an eternal perspective... Even when you're going through a difficult thing, if you're walking by the Spirit, He helps you see it in the scale of the bigger picture. 
And we're, we're walking through a difficult time now, but everything we're doing now is counting for eternity. And, and that's not works. That's just the condition of your heart and the condition of your spirit, man. And, you know, when you're in love with somebody, you want to spend time with them. I know we've all heard this, but you should wake up in the morning voracious to get into the word of God. Wake up a little earlier. Drink a little extra espresso. Make sure you're awake. Don't have your phone out there, you know, ready to check all your Facebook stuff. Start with God. Prioritize God. Give him the first fruits of your time in your day. I know not everybody's a morning person like me. But I'm just saying there's such a benefit because it sets the compass of your whole day when you do it early. That was just a freebie. But it says that creation waits eagerly for the sons of God to be revealed. Whew. All of creation. Now, if David had put Saul's armor on, do you think he would have killed Goliath? Is that what creation is waiting for? That counterfeit version of David. David had already proven himself to kill with that slingshot. He didn't have to take Saul's armor. So everywhere there's somebody trying to put a counterfeit identity on you, throw that thing off and put on the new nature of God. And you have been very kind to hang in there this long with me. Um, I'm going to end. Let's stand. <laughs> Thank you. You know, the truth um, has two sides to it. It confronts us, and it forces us to, make, to take action. And, you know, if you don't take action, that in itself is a decision, isn't it? Right? We've heard it. You, you're, there's no neutral in the kingdom. You're either moving forward and you're growing, or you're sliding backwards. We don't have a natural maintenance mode as Christians. So maybe you could just lift your hands for a minute and say, Lord, I surrender to your will for my life. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. No other human on the planet is made like me, and no one else will ever be made like me. I am uniquely and fearfully and wonderfully made. And just say that about yourself. We sing that song, I am who you say that I am, and who the sun sets free is free indeed, and you have set me free from that law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. That's what you're walking in, church. That's what you're work, walking in. Now, will he give you a new pair of shoes to walk a little better? Absolutely. Absolutely. But are you walking with him? Yes. I hope this didn't come across in a condemning way. Okay? Because that fleshly thing in us will just say, well, I can never change. This is just the way I am. Before you knew the Lord, maybe, you know, because you wouldn't have had the tools to change, but now you have the tools to change. And if he's a loving father, just like you're loving your kids, you want them to flourish. You want them to prosper. God did not want David to take Saul's armor into battle. That wasn't going to get it done. He had to have enough confidence in who he was. And you get that in a loving relationship. If you had a loving father here, man, what a gift that is. It's a big wound in the body of Christ and in the world that a lot of people didn't have that. But now you have the perfect father. So you can have that loving relationship with the perfect father. And I've said it before, but in case you weren't here, there's a great documentary out by a guy about a, a man named Russ Taff, who was a very popular Christian singer back in the 80s and 90s. And um, he, you know, he grew up in a rough home. The only thing that got him free was receiving the father's blessing from a man of God. The big issue there was his father's abuse. And now all of a sudden this man of God steps in and instead of what Rust Taff was used to curses and, and defilement, this man of God prays a father's blessing over him. No other program worked to get him to stop drinking. <laughs> One prayer by a man who was dead a month later. He had gone to visit this man because he was sick with cancer. And for that purpose, that meeting, everything was worth it. This whole, this guy's whole life turned around because of a father's blessing.